I'm Akula Dunn from the University of Texas at San Antonio, Department of Chemistry, Cole Schooner Group. I'm going to talk about intrinsically distorted proteins. Proteins are characterized into ordered and disordered. The ordered proteins are represented by a rigid secondary and tertiary structure, um, whereas the secondary structure is just the spatial arrangement of the atoms and the amino acid residue, and the main secondary structures are alpha helix and the beta conformation. The alpha helix is the representation of the simplest arrangement of the amino acid residues in the polypeptide chain to maintain rigidity, and it's stabilized by hydrogen bonding via the peptide bond, and the stability of the helix is affected by the side chains of the amino acid. Um, the tertiary structure is the 3D arrangement of the atoms in the protein, and the proteins have an N-terminal, which has an amine group at the end, and a C-terminal, which has a carboxyl group at the end. They also are characterized by hydrophobic residues, which stabilize the alpha helix, and their dihedral angles are at an equilibrium. Disordered protein, uh, characterized by a flexible structure, they have the unstable secondary and tertiary structure under physiological conditions. There has to be at least one disordered region. There's a varying dihedral angle, and there is also random coiling, which is just a result of the alpha helix being unfolded. There are four types of structural classifications, which represent the thermodynamic states that the protein uh, change between. Uh, the disordered is the random coil that's extended due to repulsion between the net charges on the residues. The molten globule is uh, collapsed and it has similar patterns of folding and secondary structure to ordered proteins and ordered proteins are just irregular folded states. And the pre-molten globular is uh, just characterized by a not defined tertiary structure. There are examples of factors that contribute to disorder, such as loss of binding partner, internal, external toxins, reactive oxidative stress, and changes in the cellular environment. The positive aspect of intrinsically disordered proteins are their functions, which include transport signaling, such as one-to-many and many-to-one. And then there's translation control and cell division regulation. Uh, the negative aspect of IDPs are the diseases that they're involved in, such as cardiovascular disease, such as heart disease, um, neurodegenerative diseases, and cancer. The properties of disorder-promoting amino acid residues include low hydrophobicity, um, high net charge, and they're polar. Um, the high net charge causes repulsion between some residues. There are two types of disorder-promoting amino acid residues, polar and structure breaking. For polar, serine and glutamine are the uncharged. Aspartic acid and glutamic acid are negatively charged, and lysine and arginine are positively charged. Proline is considered structure breaking because of the bulkiness of its side chain, brings about steric hindrance in the helix, whereas glycine and side chain doesn't protect the, the backbone of the helix. An effect of disorder proteins on the body um, is Parkinson's disease. It was first reported in 1817 by James Parkinson. It's characterized by the aggregation of proteins which causes uh, neurotoxicity and it disrupts vital cell functions. It, is, it affects more than one and a half million people in the U.S. And about 50,000 new cases are reported each year and many others go unreported. $25 billion is about the amount of money that's spent each year on health care costs. It usually onsets around age 60. It's undetected because the symptoms are generally symptoms of old age, such as slow movement, unsteady balance, and tripling of hands. 
She was like diagnosed with CT scan and MRI. However, the early stages of the brain in these scans are depicted as normal. And it has also been linked to memory problems such as dementia. Alpha synuclein, which is an IDP, is hypothesized to be the cause of Parkinson's. It's characterized by 140 residues and it's flexible and natively unfolded. There are three mutants that are associated with Parkinson's. There are the A53, T, A30P, and E46. K M for the A53, that just means that alanine on the 53rd residue is replaced with a 3 and 9. Uh, the function of alpha synuclein is unknown, and factors that contribute to its aggregation are changes in pH, temperature, and metal. Usually aggregates at a lower pH. How are they studied? Um, these are some examples of how they are studied experimentally, such as circular dichroism, X-ray crystallography, solid and solution state NMR, and fluorescent spectroscopy. And you can get information about the structure and the dynamics of the protein. Some weaknesses of these techniques um, for X-ray crystallography, some Disordered regions are not shown on the electron density map, and then there is a crystal packing which can make an ordered state go to a disordered state. For NMR, it um, sometimes can distinguish between the thermodynamic states, such as it doesn't distinguish between disordered and pre molten globular. Circular dichroism, it doesn't indicate the region of disorder, and then there's overall structural averaging, and then you have the aggregation problem to worry about. Theoretical studies complement experimental studies. The proteins are studied using molecular dynamic simulation, and you have the all-atom classical molecular dynamics where it considers the bonded and non-bonded interaction. The advantages of the theoretical studies are that it's easier to control. You don't have to worry about the aggregation factor, and you can study the conformational changes, thermodynamic properties, and the hydrogen bonding. The disadvantages are that there's no well-defined IDP structure to compare um, it to, and it depends on the force field parameters, and of course time is a factor, and it doesn't consider the many body interactions, and there's a size restriction on the system. There's, you're limited to study a certain number of atoms. And then why are you interested in studying IDPs is to determine the nature of disorder, increase knowledge, and contribute to treatment exploration.